Hey there everyone, welcome back to the Stretchfit Inn and in today's video, as you can see, Enrique is a strong contender. That is just the news that has come out. We'll also be speaking about Wayne Rooney and a couple comments that he made on Manchester United and more so Marcus Rashford. But of course, how are you guys doing? How was the weekend? And enjoy the Monday start of a new week with that fresh mindset. Don't look at it as a blue Monday. You know, we always want to spread positivity, spread happiness and good energy to the rest of our Manchester United supporters out there because the world is in a bit of a tough situation with finances, war, poverty, etc. So many issues that we can speak about, but we always look to spread love, happiness and positivity, you know, here on the street with end to all of our members in the community and those that are still here to follow us. Speaking of which, continue to like and subscribe to the street with end here. Our goal is to have at least 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year. And thank you for those who have already subscribed. We definitely love your support and we appreciate it. Continue also to follow us on TikTok, Instagram and Twitter. Links are in the description below to our various socials. So, without further ado, let's get into the news. Various, various reports have come out this morning saying that Luis Enrique is a strong contender for the Manchester United job as manager mainly because of him appealing as a much more cheaper financial option for the board and Glazers, as it will be much cheaper for them to get him away from Spain rather than trying to get Ten Hag away from Ajax Amsterdam. Because with Pochettino and Eric Ten Hag, it is also reported that for deals to be done with the two of them, or with either of them, there would need to be clauses in their contracts that would need to be met in order for them to sign on the dotted line, whereas Enrique is a much more easier financial option for them. But of course, it's also his statistics, his achievements that also speak for themselves, as we very much remember his time at Barcelona with that famous trio that he had with Messi, Neymar and Suarez, you know, the MSN that completely terrorized, you know, the defenses around Europe and in Spain. And of course, winning the treble with Barcelona, we've known his coaching philosophy is, of course, Tika Taka. Of course, it is similar to Pep Guardiola, perhaps if not better, because before Pep Guardiola, there was, you know, a Luis Enrique. And, you know, over time, Enrique has showed that even with his time at Spain, with a, shall I say, an average Spanish national team, he basically has shown that he definitely can do well with, you know, shall I say, not average players, but good quality players, not world-class, but good quality players and actually make them a force to be reckoned with. And yes, we know that he is part of the national team and will go to the World Cup, definitely. But of course, you know, perhaps he could come in and do the business, you know, at the end of the season quickly, you know, if they can get the deal done for Enrique, perhaps they can allow him to, you know, give him and give the club any instructions in terms of players that need to be bought, players that need to be sold, you know, perhaps training regimes to be put in certain things to be developed at the club. And of course, you know, he can do the work on both sides. He could be with the national team, you know, and of course allow the club to deal with whatever and coaching staff of the club itself to particularly take on the players in a pre-season, etc. But it would be, you know, entirely difficult for us to get him, mainly because the season starts before the World Cup. So it would kind of cause a bit of congestion in terms of, you know, doing jobs as a manager for Manchester United and also for Spain. But I do want to say that it is positive, it is tantalizing, because Enrique is a very good coach. His philosophy is beautiful. The style of football that he plays is beautiful, it is elite, it is classy, it is quick passing in and around the box, you know, creating space, overloading, you know, tikka-taka football, as we see, you know, with Pep Guardiola and Manchester City, he basically can come in and revolutionize the club, just like Eric Ten Hag would definitely do the same. But, of course, I do have a bit of, you know, something, shall I say, not negative, but 
just a bit of a a shining light that might come through and this i can call it a negative light but before i get to to saying that i want to also say that in the same reports it is said that amongst the board and many people at manchester united enrique is highly highly favored um to basically um, be chosen as the new manager for manchester united and i guess that is a positive if you look at the time when Oli you know, just got sacked. Ronaldo was asked who he thinks, you know, could come in and do the job. And he basically said Luis Enrique would be the man for him. And when Enrique was asked about the Manchester United manager's job and him being a target, he basically asked, is today April Fool's Day? Completely blowing off, you know, any talk of him being, you know, a candidate. But reports have come out today, as I have said, that he is a strong contender because of him being a better financial option and many people amongst the board and others at the club admire him highly and would like him to be the new Manchester United manager. But here's the negative light that I want to bring in. This could also just be more delays by the board because they want Pochettino. There have been reports of Harry Kane being linked to us and that he is our number one target as a striker and we wanted him last year but we spoke to Daniel Levy and, you know, we decided to do it this year because of budgetary constraints and, you know, the board, basically the fans and the club itself, you know, and majority of the people at the club want Eric Ten Hag to come in, you know, and also for us to sign a defensive midfielder. But on the other hand, the board wants Pochettino and Kane to reunite at United just because they had a good time at Spurs. That is irking me because I simply cannot understand why we would want to get a striker and a manager who both failed when they had their time at Spurs. Kane has still not won a trophy. Yes, he would probably do so under a better club. Yes, Kane is a, is a top world-class striker in his own right, but he's not the striker that we want at the club. He's not the striker that Eric Ten Hag would probably want at the club. I don't even think he's the striker that Luis Enrique would want at the club. So in, in my opinion, Pochettino and Kane should definitely not be coming to Manchester United. I just feel as if that it's absolutely stupid that the two of them are being seen or are being targeted by the club and being, shall I say, okay, I'm looking for a much stronger word than targeted, but, you know, that they are basically craving a Pochettino and Kane reunion at Manchester United. Why do we want two people that have failed when they were together? Kane completely turned his back on Pochettino when he realized that the team was going nowhere with him. Him, Son, you name it, all of them turned their back on Pochettino. Do you honestly think that Pochettino would basically come in and that Kane would want to play under him again? Do you really think so? He'd probably go to City and go and score goals for fun there under Guardiola. So, I, I, I hate that those are also reports that have come out, but it is what is being said. It is once again the English media hyping up the English players in Harry Kane, you know, putting him out in the market for basically maybe City to come in and try and get him or for another club to try and come and get him. But I know for a fact I don't want him at Manchester United. Yes, they might say he's in his prime, but what, he's going to be there for one, two years and then he's going to start slacking. No. No, 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 no. I don't want um, Harry Kane or Pochettino at the club. That is just a negative light to why I'm thinking perhaps the board might be delaying the, the decision in you know choosing a new manager because they want Pochettino and they want him to be an attraction to bring Harry Kane. It's all about selling shirts. If Kane comes, you know, the English supporters that support him will definitely buy Manchester United jerseys. It's again all about money. But I just want to again to speak about the headlines before we get into the Rooney you know and Enrique being a strong contender because of financial you know being a better financial option for Manchester United and I said on myself it's probably just because they are delaying it because they're waiting for PSG to make a decision on Pochettino and then we can definitely go after Pochettino and use him to get Harry Kane who's also very much in the reports today linking himself to Manchester United now, I want to speak about the Wayne Rooney 
interview and the two comments that came out and has been doing the rounds in the news as of today. And he basically first spoke about Marcus Rashford and said that he hopes that Marcus Rashford gets his head out of his ass and that he actually goes and beats the top goal scorer record for Manchester United because he is a Manchester United born and bred Mancunian. And that is Rooney basically just giving him a bit of motivation from the outside to go out there and do the business, to go out there and perform well. He's basically seeing what is happening and he's basically just giving constructive criticism which is needed, you know, positive, you know, energy being given to him to go out there. And more so, it's also in the lead up to the game against Leicester. And we know Rashford wasn't called up to the England squad. And we know that he's been training quite hard behind the scenes, you know, to be fit, to be better for this Leicester game and for a strong end to the season. So let's hope that that comments of Wayne Rooney actually, you know, will spur him on and push him to be the number 10 that a Wayne Rooney was with the same mentality, the same bulldog, you know, work like tireless working rate that he should have, you know, on the pitch for Manchester United, running with blood on his face if it should be that way, you know, running through an injury, being like a Wayne Rooney, basically on the pitch, who was Manchester United's number 10 before um, Marcus Rashford. The other comments that he made as well was also quite positive for the future. And he said that he was offered the Everton job, but he declined it because he wants the Manchester United job. And he knows that he's not ready right now, but he's working hard to become Manchester United manager one day. That's brilliant to know that someone of his mentality, someone of his you know, work ethic, and we see what he's doing at Derby County. And he can only and will only improve you know, as a manager, but... For him to say that publicly shows that he has a long-term goal in mind and shows that he wants to be at an elite club, you know, and he wants to have and be an elite manager. And he's still learning his trade and he's willing to work hard so that he can one day become Manchester United manager. That is brilliant news for me and kind of puts a bit of a pep in my step as well as the news of Luis Enrique being a strong contender because I, I did say if we don't get anything hard, Luis Enrique is an option I would go for. I'm not saying it's option A and option B, but those are the two managers I believe that would do the business for Manchester United. It being in Luis Enrique or Eri Ten Hag as my two options. If you haven't seen the video on Eri Ten Hag, definitely go and give it a watch and leave a like on the video if you haven't done so before. Also, Luis Enrique, quite simply, a beautiful manager with a beautiful playing philosophy. And of course, you know, this has been evidently shown in his time at Barcelona and his time now currently with the Spain national team. But I thank you guys for joining me. Definitely continue to follow us on Twitter, TikTok and Instagram. Links are in the description below to our various socials. And of course, that is was just a strong wind. But hopefully that is the winds of change that will definitely come into Manchester United and, you know, change our fortunes for the future and bring us back to the top competing and challenging and where we are supposed to be as the biggest club in the world, Manchester United. Thank you guys for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the videos here on YouTube. Our goal is to have 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year. That is it, me, your host, Sasson Johnson from The Straight Within. Till we speak again soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye, Reds.